Okay, today in this video, we're going to be discussing diminished chords and specifically what on earth to do with diminished chords when we have them in a progression where we have to resolve um, the the kind of tense um, uh, dissonant harmony that comes with a diminished chord. Remember that diminished chord, actually the root and the fifth are the ones that are the unstable elements. And so in your diminished harmony, you're actually going to want to double the third. It's one of the few times where we really have to double the third of the triad um, so that we're not accidentally doubling another note that is going to be a tendency tone and need to resolve in a particular pattern. So we have two examples here in um, E minor, and I just want to walk through both of them and uh, talk about where the placement of the different notes are, um, you know, each chord member is. So we've got our one chord to start us off, right? E, G, and B. We've doubled the E because we're in a root position triad. Um, that makes our spacing fairly open, but um, but you know not ridiculous. Um, we still have much less than an octave between contiguous voices, and so um, you know that'll give us some room to work with. The seven diminished six. Notice that it is a diminished chord in minor, but basically uh, that means we have to add the leading tone in. Okay, because that's, um, you know, not going to be a diatonic uh, pitch. So we go ahead and put the F sharp in the bass and the F sharp in the tenor. So remember, we're, our chord tones are going to be D sharp, F sharp, and A, right? That makes up our uh, diminished triad. We're going to double the third. So we're doubling our F sharp here. Up above is where the leading tone comes in. That's the root of the chord. And then the A is up above that. Notice that we have fifths here, but they are not even, okay? They're, they're not considered parallel because we're actually going from a perfect fifth to a diminished fifth, okay? Same thing when we resolve. So what we have in the next chord here can kind of go a couple of different ways, actually. We're going to a one six. Notice that the seven, um, because it's not in root position, we're not going directly to a one. Okay. So if you find that in your writing, go back and double check what you've done, because really our seven should always be in a first version. And then that means that we're not going to go to a root position chord. So, um, or root position tonic anyway. Um, here, the very first thing that we have to do is we have to resolve our leading tone, right? So the D sharp goes up, okay, up to E. We know that the base has to be G because we're in the first inversion of this triad. So now we have some decisions to make on where everything else goes. Um, we could maybe consider doing um, two Gs in the base that, or sorry, not base, but the base in the tenor. That'd be okay. Um, a lot of times that's not really considered parallel octaves, parallel, but it is parallel unisons, which you know, we like to avoid that stuff if we can. So we're going to instead go ahead and leap up to the B. Um, it is a fourth, but it is a perfect fourth. And so we're not, um, you know, concerned necessarily with, with the, uh, the span of that particular leap. Um, and it does keep our voices, you know, separated. So tenor can go into the B, that's fine. The A, because the A is part of this tritone here, what would be optimal is maybe to bring it down to the G here, okay? So that that tritone can actually resolve inward. So whatever direction your leading tone goes, the other side of that tritone really wants to go the opposite direction. Um, that would be fine. And we can double the third of a one six chord. That's not really going to be a problem. If you really felt like you needed to double the, um, the root, um, you know, unfortunately you're going to run into a little bit more trouble because we have, um, a leap here, you know, a to E would take us quite far. And I, I'm not sure that we really want to go up that far. Um, it would be it, it it depending on where you were in your in your voicing maybe you could deal with that but the fact that we actually have 
this here in, oops, I'm still erasing, aren't I? Sorry. There we go. Um, to the G, that's really the most optimal um, resolution pattern that we have there. Um, and just for clarity, I'm going to erase this down here. There we go. All right. So that's that. Um, moving on to the next couple of chords here. This is a kind of a slightly different, um, slightly different pattern. Uh, we are still in E minor, so remember that the two chord in minor is a diminished chord diatonically. So uh, what we have is our one six, that then is going to a two diminished six chord. So in E minor, obviously that's going to be F sharp, and I'll do it down here. So F sharp, A, and C natural. Um, we've put the A in the bass and then doubled that note up in the soprano. Okay, so this time our doubling is actually in two different uh, voices in space, right? Um, not necessarily on the same staff like we had in the previous um, example. So we've got A and A, F sharp and C are in the middle. And it might look a little bit like, hmm, this middle line's a little um, close. Uh, we do have a unison here to start with. So immediately we've separated that out by going in um, you know, opposite directions. Okay, so contrary motion there. So our tritone here is between the F sharp and the C. Now, what we have is kind of an indirect type of resolution, okay, because we're going to a 5-7. We're not just going to a tonic. So uh, the 5-7 is in root position. That's a B chord, right? B, D sharp, F sharp, and A. We keep the common tone A. We keep the common tone F sharp. Um, the bass takes care of itself. So the only place we really can go with the tenor is up to the D sharp. Um, and then uh, we move here, uh, you know, to resolve it afterward. There's one problem with this, and you might be tempted to do this on um, your part writing exam, but I wanted to point this out. This looks great, right? I mean, just to look at it, you know, at first glance, it doesn't look like there's really any problems. However, and, and I'm following all of our rules, right, which is to keep the common tones. However, if you look carefully, this interval is a problem. Okay, that is actually our augmented second interval. And yes, it does happen. I know there are plenty of examples in Bach, um, but what we want to do is avoid augmented intervals if we can in our part writing. And so what I am going to do is actually revoice this chord because we have to eliminate that augmented second. I can't do anything about the bass, but I am going to um, see if there's a way that we can kind of, you know, get around that, um, that particular chord. And then that might change our resolution pattern here too. Okay, so let's take a peek at this and I'll do this in green so that it looks a little bit different from what's already up there. So we, we know we need a D sharp, we need an F sharp and we need an A. If I wanted to put the D sharp in the soprano, my problem there would be A to D sharp being a um, tritone. And that's also a forbidden interval melodically. So can't go in the soprano, can't go in the tenor. So guess what? I'm stuck a little bit. <laughs> we are gonna have to put it in the alto. Okay, that's really the only place that this can go right now. Um, we've got an A and then we've got an F sharp. Well, um, the A, again, it would be easy to say, all right, let's just stick to the common tone, right? Because we're used to doing that. But again, if I do F sharp, I've got a tritone here. So we have a lot of intervallic issues with this one. So what we're going to have to do, and which is really the only thing we can do, is we're going to have to put the F sharp in the soprano and move by thirds. Okay. Technically speaking, this is not a voice crossing or voice um, overlap because it just comes to the same note. So we're, we're, we're okay there. Um, and then we're going to have to come down to A here. Okay. It's really the only thing we can do to avoid any of those augmented intervals. Now let's take a peek and see what we have here with our resolution. So we have to move the base. And remember that there is a, a rule with root position, 
five, seven chord that's being resolved to a resistant tonic chord. It's going to be an incomplete resolution so that we can avoid all the parallel fifths. And another color, we have them right in front of us. So here's a fifth, right? A to E, and here's a fifth, B to E. So we're gonna have to redo what was given to us here and see if we can resolve some of this correctly. So what we have is an E there that we know has to go there. And then we've got the G and the B. Um, we need to resolve some things in the upper voice, okay? We know that our leading tone has to go up. We know that our chordal seventh, the A has to come down. So E, G, E, if we went up to B here, we would again have parallel fifths. We would have them between the soprano and the bass. Obviously not a good thing, right? So we can't go to B. Um, generally speaking, the acceptable resolution is to triple the root. So just remember in root position five, seven, going to a root position tonic, major or minor, you will need to triple the root in the tonic and make it a an incomplete triad, which is fine to do, um, in order to avoid all the parallels whenever you're doing any kind of um, any kind of resolution pattern that way. There is one other option that I wanted to bring up, and and that is basically to have an incomplete dominant chord. So let me do this in a, a different color here. So I'm going to do um, a pink color. So we've got our B, right? And in making an incomplete root position five seven chord, basically the note we're going to leave out is this F sharp. Okay. It's the only note we can leave out. We can't leave out the leading tone. We can't leave out the chordal seventh. We can't leave out the bass. So we've got a bass note. And if we can, we'll just double, since we have four uh, voices, we'll see if we can double um, the bass, because that, again, is the only note that isn't a tendency tone. Um, we need to have the D sharp. And we've gone over this already, that we can only really have it in this, in this um, alto voice here. We need to have an F sharp. And again, unfortunately, the F is only gonna be available in the soprano because we can't leap to it from a C in the tenor. So what we're gonna do in the tenor is we're simply gonna step down. Now, if I'm resolving this to the next chord, okay, my, my E comes up because I have to resolve the bass the way that the Roman numerals tell me to do it. Um, the, uh, the E comes to, oh, sorry, wait a minute. <laughs> let me, let me undo this. Let me undo this. I jumped ahead too far. Okay. Uh, we don't want the F sharp. Sorry. We do want the A. We want to keep the A. I thought that looked a little weird, weird to me. Okay. Let me, let me get back to this here. We've got the F sharp. Oops. Why is this still erasing? Okay. We've got the F sharp. Or sorry, we get the D sharp. Okay, and that was our previous resolution. Now we're in business. I thought that looked a little weird. Okay, so we do need to keep the A, right? We don't have the F sharp though. That one is going to be, um, yeah, we can do this. So we can keep the, keep the common tone. Okay, now we can resolve it. Now, now I caught myself, okay. So we do resolve the leading tone up. And then of course the chordal seventh has to come down. Okay, there we go. Now that we have a chordal seventh, it can resolve down. Now, since we've got all these things resolved, we can simply keep the common tone B. So in that case, this pink resolution here is where we have an incomplete five, seven going to a complete tonic. It's not, um, I think maybe as common as you know, a complete dominant chord and then an incomplete resolution. Um, it, it is equally effective though. And um, if you remember all your chord tones uh, is just as, um, you know, it is valid basically is going the other way. It takes care of all of the parallels and makes, makes a nice smooth um, melodic line. And you do actually get to do more with um, stepwise motion and, and keeping your common tone. So if that's what you're after, 
then the five, seven being incomplete is totally fine. Again, coming from this diminished two, um, we just, we have a lot to consider in terms of the um, intervallic structures of that five, seven, you know, which notes are gonna be in which voices because we wanna try to avoid all augmented melodic intervals.